Welcome back, everybody. Like I said, we're here another great episode here on the Veteran Influencers Podcast. Like I told you before, we have another great guest, and here was his associate from F45. And I know you guys know this particular person because he is extremely famous to us Marines. And I remember in the uh, er, it was like the mid to to late two thousand or mid to early two thousand tens. I remember before me deciding to go to the drill field, I literally watched ears open, eyeballs click every single day in Iraq, pacing back and forth from the career planner's office back to my workspaces, to the career planner's office, back to my workspaces, because I was too nervous to do it, and I would watch that video. It gave me the most utmost uh, motivation to want to go do it. I was so hyped to be a drill instructor because of this man, and I've literally watched his journey from then to where he's at now, from the Black Friday videos to doing the F45 thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Everybody stand up for the great Staff Sergeant Nichols, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's how we start every day with him, too. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and like I said, I, and I don't mean to leave anybody off, but I've been waiting to say that for years. You know what I'm saying? So I had to get that out of my system. I'm kind of sweating right now because, like I said, I have literally watched just like watched him like on from his movies to his clips to just – Someone that a lot of Marines look up to in the community, and it's it's definitely a privilege and an honor to be uh, to be in you guys' presence. So I appreciate you guys for the opportunity here today. Absolutely, thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Woo! Now that I got that out the way, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you feel a little better now? I I, I feel great. It's kind of hot in here, you know. I, I'm not nervous. I'm just hot in here, you know. It's like 80 <laughs> degrees, you know. <laughs> But uh, uh, so as you guys, you know, and we're going to get into F45 here in a second. But as you guys see in the background, um, the, for those of you guys that do know about the F45 brand, um, we're, we're going to go into what they stand for, their purpose, their mission, and kind of like w locations. All that good stuff is speaking about their brand. Uh, but if we can real quick, um, Mike, I got to get used to just saying Mike, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Mike. just Mike or Michael. <laughs> it's, it's good. Hello, Bob. No, thank you, man. <laughs> But um, Mike, if you can real quick, just kind of talk about like um, like uh, a quick early life time uh, time in the military, and then just like when you decided that you wanted to be an entrepreneur. So a little bit about me: I'm originally from Louisiana. Back in 1994, I graduated high school, and uh, about two weeks before my brother went to boot camp in February 1995, his recruiter offered me a thousand dollar sign up bonus if I went to boot camp with him. I'm from Louisiana. I ain't never seen a thousand dollars in my life. So I'm like, yeah, I mean, that, to me, it was like a million bucks. So my brother and I both went to boot camp together back in February, 1995. And about two or three days in the boot camp, my brother slipped a disc in his back and he got discharged and I ended up staying in the military. And one of the, you know, like, it was like one of those pivotal moments in my life. Like the, because we joined on the buddy program, if he right. left, if he left, I could leave with him. And so uh, his, uh, the drill instructor at the time, he was like, let me guess, you want to go home too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. He said, you got you got one minute to go decide if you're going to stay in boot camp or go home. And so my brother ran over to me. He said, um, and I don't think I've ever shared this with anybody. Uh, my brother ran over to me. He's like, look, I can't stay, but do this for us. And... That was a pivotal moment in my life. I had a decision, a hard decision. Do I stay here and embrace the pain alone? Or do I embrace the pain and change the Nichols name forever? And here we are, fast forward 26 years later, uh, looking back on my life. And it really goes back to the decisions that my brother made. The recruiter helped me to decide and me being in boot camp uh, and becoming a United States Marine. So on May 5th, 1995, I graduated from recruit training as a private and went on to uh, do great things out in the fleet. Wow. That's, that's so crazy. And first of all, y'all heard him say it's exclusive to veteran influencers. He ain't never told nobody. So, Hey, <laughs> Hey, I'm hearing it first here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, that's crazy. So what was your MOS? So my MOS was 3531, which is motor transport. Okay. Um, I went on to be a 3537 and I also, uh, so a little bit about my journey in the Marines. Uh, I, I, my first duty station was Iwakuni, Japan. I was there for a year. First duty station. 
back in 1995 to 96. I was okay. there for a year. And then I got stationed in 29 Palms. <laughs> He's got sound effects for it. So I got stationed in 29 Palms and I actually checked into the motor pool in 29 Palms and they needed people to go out to the airfield to be refuelers. So I got trained to become a refueler and hands down, that was the best motor transport job I've ever had in my 12 year military career, because I think it was because it was very independent, like, you know, like the, the air wings would give us a list of all the aircrafts that needed to be refueled. Right. And you'd just go out and accomplish the mission, accomplish the mission. Uh, so it was a very, uh, it wasn't like you know, a traditional motor pool where everything's controlled. It was like you work 12 on 12 off shifts. Okay. So it was really, it was really good to independently grow. And now I'm picking up NCO, went to Corporal's, car, Cor- Corporal's course in Twine Palms, went to Sergeant's course in Twine Palms. And then uh, I ended up getting orders to drill fill back in uh, 2000. A long time ago. That's 20 years ago. You know, I was going to say something about that because when you said 95 to 96, I was like, man, you're really showing your age. No, I, I was just kidding. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, like for whatever reason, like I, uh, people said, man, you don't look like you age at all. You know, I'm 44, I'm 44 years old. I'll uh, be 45 in April. And people are like, oh my God, I can't believe you. you know, it just, I guess it's a good genetic gene, uh, but or I'm doing something right in fitness. Must be F45. Hey, you know what I'm saying? F45, people. Hey, 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 he got a little brother in him, man. That's what we found out. I got a little brother in him. <laughs> no, that, so that, did you ever tell your brother that he was the reason why you decided to stay in? You know, it, it, it became really, you know, still to this day, 26 years later, him and I struggle with our relationship because, you know, he was a, he was a, a jock in high school and went on to be extremely successful. Actually, he was on him and Peyton Manny played on the same all-star football team that they were quarterbacks together. And so he was extremely successful in high school. And then we joined the military. He got hurt and I ended up going on and doing great things in the military. And I think it's, uh, it, it caused a divide between our relationship, but I can honestly tell you, I'm humbled by my brother and, you know, he's always been a role model, even though that I, we don't see eye to eye. He is the reason why I'm here today. Hey, that's, you know what? I, I like people that can do that is just because you're not necessarily on the same page as someone doesn't mean you can't give them their flowers. And I think all too often it's like when you feel a certain way about somebody, it's just hate that comes out, you know? So yeah. I definitely appreciate people like you. I know your brother appreciates that. And obviously you had a good brother for him to, you know, kind of inspire you to, to do great things. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the Marine Corps gave me a chance to really pull up my pants, grow up and, and, you know, learn by trial by fire, but you learn really quick in the military. And uh, I ended up going down to the drill field in 2000. And a lot of people, you know, just by the grace of God happened to know me when I was going through at the time, what's really crazy is that we used to be able to take our, our cameras into the squad bays. And this is before the movies of ears open eyeballs click and black Friday, uh, dark dawn. Uh, we used to be able to take our video cameras in and we'd film all of our pickups and you know just to laugh and joke and you know like oh you look at this kid and stuff like that <laughs> but um you know like a, a lot of people ask me like how did your platoon get filmed and i didn't do anything special it was my first senior drill instructor cycle i was located on the first floor uh because i was a new senior and so a movie director got embedded with my platoon to film the documentary that had you know ended up being in film festivals around the world mm. and winning awards being on hbo and all these other accolades i didn't do anything special i just happened to be at the right place at the right time and you know like this is uh, a good chance for me to share why i believe that um by the grace of god people know who i am i believe that when i was on my third and fourth cycle i was i was in a lot of trouble i i had 44 allegations at a time uh with recruits i was i was I, yeah i was pretty intense and it, w- it was like when i was going down when i was on the drill field we were extremely intense my first two or three cycles 
But what I realized is that I wasn't doing what God called me to do, which was being the motivator. You know, like a lot of people know me now as the motivator. But at the time, I was trying to be a drill instructor like someone else and, you know, uh, implementing policies and procedures and the way I treated recruits their way. And I got, I had 44 allegations. I had a NIPLOC, non-letter of punitive of caution uh, from the commanding officer. I got put on the bench for about two or three months and two or three months I kinda, yeah i was on the bench for a couple months and Listen, i know what the pressure is like when you i think i got sat down one time for something one of my hats did and i'm telling you right now your own team won't talk to you they'll look at you and like in this the, the walk of shame you're sitting outside the company office and people just walk by you like this hmm they would give you that mm, southern mm. months must be nice oh yeah <laughs> but during that time i ended up realizing that you know i need to get my life together and during that time frame i gave my life to christ and kind of started changing my ways and i made a commitment when i was on a drill field which is a kind of an oxymoron you kind of you're doing all these high speed 007 things but then then you give your life to Christ. And so like, that was a pivotal moment in my life that either I keep uh, doing things that I know I'm not supposed to do and that ends in destruction or I make a positive change. And for me, that positive change was giving my life to Christ and being committed, not inspired. You know, that's one of my slogans, uh, commit, committed, not inspired. A lot of people get inspired to do a lot of things, but they don't have commitment. So they never get to where they're supposed to be. And I made a commitment at that very moment that no matter what happens every Sunday, I go to church and I gave my life to Christ and slowly but surely things started to turn around and I got reinstated to go back across the street and start training recruits again. And I truly believe that uh, the documentary on my platoon was filmed because I gave my life to Christ and Christ knew that I would be a good example for other people to follow. Let's, let's go. You, you know, it, it's so crazy, too, because and this is one of the reasons why I like getting veterans on this type of platform, because you, you get a lot of information that you probably wouldn't normally get through someone's Instagram or just, you know, unless you know that person personally. But it, it is definitely great to see you in like a, a different light, not that it's better or worse, but to see you in a different light. I mean, the majority of what I know you from, I mean, let's be honest, is, is the movies and, you know, and just seeing you like over time. And I think a lot of people, I mean, you can even see the thumbnail. It's the, the whole campaign cover, like. <laughs> <laughs> but um so let me ask you this because i that that what did that movie do for you the the whole ears open eyeballs click because i'm gonna tell you right now like there's when i mention it to the people at work and i talked and i was like dude i got stassar nichols like he's gonna be a guest now of course the lance corps was like who's that boy <laughs> But, you know, the, the, the older <laughs> generation, you know, us, us senior folks, you know, we it instantly have like, they started saying some of your isms from the movie and stuff, you know, broken. You're not broken. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what a broken leg looks like. And that is not broken. I've always, let's go. Let's go. Thank you. And we're clipping that right there. <laughs> oh, man. So, so what did that movie do for you? Like, I mean, obviously it puts you in a little bit more of a, a, a higher light, but I'm sure you keep hearing about that throughout the years or the, hopefully they don't go, he's the ears open, eyeballs click guy. Cause I know you more than that, but. Yeah. I, you know, it was a challenging time because as a drill instructor, the last thing you want is the company commander, the public affairs officer, the camera crew. The last thing you want as a drill instructor is someone to be uh, micromanaging everything that you do. Uh, so, you know, on one side, uh, you, you, on one side of the camera, you may see uh, undisciplined recruits, but on the back side of the camera, you don't see the company commander standing right there. So I can't go uh, correct the recruit. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't go, you know, like see how he's doing, you know, check in on him, and right? Say hi and all that. So it. On one hand, it's it's an amazing thing because we get to share uh, inside secrets on how we train and motivate, inspire young men and women to do what they do. Uh, on the flip side of that is you there, you know, in life, you know, life's uh, like a bucket of crabs. I'm from Louisiana, so I'll give you a, a, a Cajun a analogy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing something positive and 
you know, there's a lot of negative people out there that criticize. Oh, I, I remember when I was a recruit, that would never happen, and this would never happen. And, and so they don't understand the full story. Uh, the full story is you got the battalion commander, company commander, the base general standing right behind the camera. So this recruit gets to get away with being undisciplined for that very moment. And there's nothing you can really do about it. And so I really had to uh, do a personal and professional check. Like, you know, there's only so much you can do. And uh, it was it was challenging, but, uh, you know, just like any other Marine, you adapt to your environment, no matter what that environment may be, so you can survive. And that's what we do as humans. That's what we do as Marines. Uh, we made the necessary adjustments. We finally got to the point where we were able to tell the camera crew, uh, shut that effing camera off and get your ass in the pit. You know what I mean? Hot, <laughs> that house was hot. <laughs> Yo, like, and you know what's crazy too is, I, so did you get a chance to go look at old film? Like while they, after they filmed it, like maybe like uh, when you were away from the platoon, like also oh, he was moving the whole time. All right, bet. Start getting your little notebook. Yeah. Right <laughs> come here, little, come here, you little. Hey, and you ain't getting away from it. There's evidence. I, look, <laughs> I got this shit on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, here's a, here's a cool part uh, that I think is uh, cool to share that. You know, it went from ears open, eyeballs click, and then it went on to, we released six series of films, Black Friday, Dark Dawn, and uh, it's been in film festivals and it's done amazing things. But I think the most important thing is, is I believe that showing, uh, giving young men and women that are joining the military access to see what's to come, I think it's given them a, a competitive advantage to go in there to be a little bit more mentally stronger, smarter and faster than they were when we came through. I remember when I joined, I had no idea what the military was about. I just knew that I had a thousand dollar sign up bonus and my brother was going. So I was in, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. I, it. Nothing else mattered at the time, but we get a chance to help young men and women prepare for the military. And so I ended up writing books and DVDs and movies and all these different things. And it's all about reaching back and you know, here's a quote that I created a long time ago. Knowledge has no power unless it's given to somebody else. So let me give you an example. If I die today, if I die today and I don't share the knowledge and the wisdom that God's given me in my heart and in my mind with other people, my dreams and desires and that passion dies with me. But if you share with other people, the passion and generations and generations to come could be have a tremendous impact in their lives. Oh, that's so great. I, hey, oh, once again, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but I, I feel like, you know, not only do you have two Marines, but you have two drill instructors. Like, it's, I, we could, like, come up with stuff to talk about all day. But as you guys see these two other wonderful people in the background, you know what I'm saying? They need their uh, moment to shine, too. But um, so, like we talked about, um, so F-45 is... It's a transitional program, right? And I don't want to get too much into it. And if I say something wrong or the wrong terminology, by all means, when, when you guys start speaking, correct me. But um, it's a training program for, for veterans to to work their way up as far as certifications, to help them to transition from active duty into, uh, you know, a, a fitness environment. Those that want to pursue the, fit, the fitness realm, you guys kind of help them uh, pursue that, um, whether it's yeah. strictly through you guys, through ownership, or, you know, like I said, to, to go on and possibly do it somewhere else, but it allows them to do it and even allows them to do it while they're active duty. So um, let me give you a little backstory on that. So I got out of the Marines in 2007 after 12 years, okay. one month and, and one, 12 years, one month, 13 days in the Marine Corps. And I got out and I got involved with the real estate industry because I was going to get out and do real estate here in California. Okay. As soon as I got out, the, the real estate market here uh, in the U.S. crashed. And so I ended up going back to Louisiana where I'm from. And my uncle is a business Mongo in Louisiana, he owns truck stops and casinos. And, you know, he's got like 30 companies that he owns. And so he got me involved with the convenience store industry. Right. So I, uh, I ended up starting out with six convenience stores, uh, grew to 10 in two years. I had a hundred employees. Um, I had a hundred employees. We had two more on the construction. We had five more pending and, I created my own brand called 24 seven express. Uh, I was working with architects and designers to create this whole new 
convenience store design, kind of like taking 7-Eleven, but amplifying it to the next level. Mm. And I was in the industry for two years and my heart and my passion was fitness and people and service members. And after two years of doing business, you know, let, let me just, the last year I was in business, uh, we generated uh, gross revenue, almost 50, $50 million a year in gross revenue. And it wasn't, what? it wasn't about the money. It was about the calling. Like God put it on my heart that I needed to leave Louisiana, come back to California, start a fitness company and help and start helping servicemen and women through fitness transition out of the military into the fitness industry. So I left Louisiana, came back to California. And after a year of being here, I blew through all kind of money. And I realized I need, I needed to get a job, a J O B. <laughs> right. <laughs> so J O B because that money can only go so far if you don't have it coming in consistently. X. And so I came back, I, I launched Moto entertainment, which is my entertainment company. And I launched a fitness company called MDI eight. And after a year I blew through all this money and I realized, man, I got to get a job because I'm going to start losing everything if I don't do it. So I ended up getting a job working at the Department of Veterans Affairs at the VA, and I ended up staying there for 10 years. While I was working at the VA, I, I was still uh, building my fitness program. And after eight years of my fitness company, I realized that I was never going to give birth to the dream that I had about the VIP program, about taking service members everywhere around the globe and helping them convert that military experience into the fitness industry. So I closed down my business on a Friday. I joined F45 on a Monday and I kind of fell in love with fitness all over again. And I realized that F45 had the infrastructure to share my VIP program with them and potentially give birth to the idea. So after about three months of work, uh, working out at F45 as a student, again, I fell in love with fitness all over again. And I shared my VIP program idea with uh, F45 HQ headquarters and long story short they hired me to be the military director for f45 oh my so this so this journey this journey is not about the money it's about what god's called me to do and my and god's called me to give servicemen and women a hand up out of the military into the fitness industry take that skill set go back to your community, make an impact. You know, a lot of people spend 20 to 30 years making a great name for themselves and then spend the next 40 or 50 talking about who they used to be. I don't want to talk about who I used to be. I want to talk about what I am, what I'm consistently doing week after week, month after month and year after year. You know, I want to be in my 50s and 60s and still changing the game for servicemen and women. It's not about the money. It's about the, the vision and mission and the calling. And so... I shared my idea with F45 and they brought me on to do it. So I joined F45 as the military director, January 6th of 2020. I hosted my first uh, track of a military track event at Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. And we had Mark Walbert come in. He's one of the owners of I, F45. I saw that like, oh, it was so dope. Yeah. So I, I put that event together and and it's it's crazy like what what God has done and yeah, I can honestly tell you and my team is here and I'll turn it over to them so they can kind of share a little bit more but we're honestly and literally we're we're able to work with so we're the only fitness company in the world authorized to work with active duty service members up to 180 days before they leave the military and so what we're able to do is they get they they submit a memorandum of understanding up their chain of command Mm -hmm. for approval and then they get basically a command approval and they get orders to come work at f45 and during that time frame uh we mold them mentor them and educate them and prepare them for the civilian world before they leave the military god that that's so crazy just to hear the different ventures that you did and it seemed like each one of them were you know successful it kind of reminds me of gary v's story i don't want to like you know put too much emphasis on him but very inspirational story and just to hear like you go from being successful as a marine as a drill instructor you're all big time in the movies and everything you know get your own uh production companies your own stores and now you know you pretty much walked it well i'm like i say you just walked into f45 but you presented uh, a great reason to why they should 
make you the t- you know uh, director of F45, and you know, like I said, a lot of us we you know we look at people like you that set the example and show us veterans that we can be more than just what we are as active duty service members. So on behalf of all the vets, all the active duty, we definitely appreciate your example that you set for us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, it, it's heart wrenching when I see so much potential uh, get lost in, in, in life because life happens no matter if we want it to or not. And a lot of service members lose their way and they lose their pep in their step, sort of speak. And I really believe that we're getting to them before they lose that pep in their step. We're, we're basically giving them a new mission, a new vision to easily transition out of the military. And fitness is a no brainer for all, all of us serving in the military. It's a no brainer. So that's, I believe that that's why our program is, and I'll, I'll turn it over to my team in a second. Uh, we're changing the game. Mm, I love that. So, M- Mr. Chaz, Miss uh, Miss Carol Ann, is, I almost didn't say the Ann part. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm a new I'm a new person. You know what I'm saying? I I, I stumbled upon F45. You know I want to. Am I able to just go in there and work out, or do do I have to be a service member to to be trained by you guys, or how does that work? AC, you want me to take the first part? Yeah, right. So so that's a great question. And first of all, uh, F45 is a for profit organization. So no, you just can't walk up in there and get a workout. You have to sign up for a trial first. <laughs> you know what I meant. Come on, Chad. <laughs> just, just, I keep it real for you, brother. So, so, the way, so the way it works is when you when you when you first show up, if you come through our program and you're looking to transition out of service and you want to look at fitness as as your what's next, as we say, then we set you up. We introduce you to the studio. We start you out with the workout. Uh, as my colleagues will tell you, if you come through our program and you're going to be a candidate in the program, you're going to get baptized in the Hollywood session, which is our 60 minute offering on a Saturday. That's an opportunity for you to get to know, uh, you know, what we do at F45. And it's a combination of the different workout platforms hit uh, F45 okay. based in the hit uh, format. So normally it's 45 minute sessions, three days a week, they're cardio based hit formats, two days a week, they're more resistance based hit formats. But the Saturday session, which is Hollywood, was where they made their bones, as they say, uh, in the fitness industry, in Australia, in its home country, in Sydney. People just loved it because it was 60 minutes, it was balls out, and it was get after. Now, we're military guys, and so we understand boot camp and training. So if you're a guest, you want to try it out, you start where you start, and you build from there. It doesn't matter what your background is, but you're going to get after it. I've never met a person yet, as long as I've been with the company now about a year, who hasn't done that workout, walk out of there going, Oh, good Lord, I'm glad that over. But man, I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. hey, so th- for those that do not know, uh, F45 is a global fitness company. They have over 2,000 studios in 60 plus countries around the world. And uh, the structure that F45 has put in place eliminates uh, a lot of failure when it comes to really making an impact through fitness. 100%. And all of us on this team, which is unique, is, is that we're all coaches. So I'm a master fitness coach. I've been one in a business going into my 30th year. Uh, Carol Ann, she'll tell you a little bit more about her background because for women uh, to come out of the military, um, that's the other thing. they know how to PT, right? But they haven't really like coached PT. They've just done PT. So I'm going to let Carol Ann speak to that because I think it's important that, you know, the diversity at F45 is also something that we, we aspire to and we are actually doing. And we're showing uh, the civilian sector in the fitness industry that you can have a diverse team, you can have diverse coaches, you can have males, females, you can have guys with military backgrounds, people with small military backgrounds, some people with no combat experience. They can come in the F45 and learn this industry and go on to great careers. So, Caroline? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Chaz Rogers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, I give everybody love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, one of the things, Chris, that, you know, we're all about here at F45 Training is meeting our members where they are. So you walk into the studio, wherever you're at, maybe you haven't been working out in years, maybe you've never really worked out, never really done a fitness program, you're a little nervous about it. We have all the way up to elite athletes and everyone's training side by side. We don't have any mirrors. We don't have any egos. It's all about learning, you know, to feel the movements in your body and learn to take cues and then do internal cues. And we're all about just encouraging each other. And it's the same approach that we take when we're working with service members, you know, we take them where they are and it's really a holistic program. So they come to us, they're interested, maybe they're curious, maybe they're really serious about getting into a career in the fitness industry and they come to us 
And we, the first thing we do is we ask them about themselves and we ask them about challenges that they had to overcome in the military and how did they get over that and what did they learn from that? And then we ask them like, where do you see yourself in the next three to five years? Because we're not just about the next three to five months. We're about where can we take you in the next three to five years? Right. And, you know, and they're like, like Chaz said, they're coming from all different walks of life. They're men, they're women. And fitness is important to them. Health and wellness is important to them. We meet them and then we set this roadmap for them. So I think as Director Nichols referred to, like sometimes you get lost, you fall on your sword. You don't really know what to do next. You've had maybe this great career in the military. Maybe it wasn't all that you wanted it to be, but either way, your service is ending. And now what do you do with that? And so what we've been really trying to do is put this structure in place. We make it easy. We say, look, come to us, give Chaz likes to say, give us your 80% and then we got the rest, you know? So we've set up programs for active duty, also for veterans, spouses, reserve, to help them get into the fitness industry. And we've also partnered up with ISSA College of Exercise Science, which is actually a college, a four-year institute of higher learning. So right. um, people who are going through our programs, uh, the academic component of that is they're getting certified as a fitness trainer. They have options to become an elite and a master fitness trainer, even while on active duty, which we're super proud about. And the whole time they actually get college credit. So I have service members that maybe got out of high school and went right into service, or maybe they, they did a little bit of college and they're interested in fitness and they can get a, a degree in exercise science. And so they can be working towards these certifications, getting college credit. Some of them are enrolling in, in associates or a bachelor's degree. I mean, they can go all the way. And so really proud because it's like a comprehensive program. And we're also working with like community partners and stuff to like help out if anyone's struggling with anything, PTSD, other types of things where Chaz and I've been really working on outreach with other community partners, especially here in the San Diego community that serve veterans and really try to support support them and serve service members so that we can really be like a one-stop shop, like a holistic program to kind of help them you know, to this next chapter and everything we do is about mentorship. It's all about trying to support them and help them get to where they want to go. So we're really proud. We're excited because we thought we were going to start, you know, you saw, we talked about that launch with Mark Wahlberg and we thought, okay, we're just going to start right here at, you know, MCS Miramar and right here in San Diego. And, you know, we were all thrust into the pandemic, right? Um, that just, that happened the week I actually started with the team. <laughs> I started on a Monday and the world shut down on a Thursday and I'm like, oh boy, but you know, F45 really believed in us. They believed in, you know, Director Nichols, they believed in what we're trying to do and they believe in the military, right? So they have completely backed us. They've supported us. They've supported our vision even through the pandemic. And we're just really blessed because, their bandwidth is so far, you know, we're in over 60 countries. We have 2000 studios, all these studios that are being built. And that's actually allowed us to serve service members at US inst installations overseas too. Like we're currently working with active duty that are in Spain, in the UK, in South Korea, in Japan. So like, and I think the power of like Zoom and all these things has enabled us to actually reach service members across the globe. And so we're really proud of that. And just having the, you know, the support of a global company you know, has allowed us to really serve people all over the world, right? So I'm really proud of that. And yeah, they're coming in like hotcakes. The troops are coming. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on my wall, if you build it, they will come because they're coming. Like every day is coming in so fast. And, you know, that just kind of affirms, you know, all this hard work we've been doing to build this program and, you know, to carry out Director Nichols' vision and mission and life's, you know, work. You know, it's, it's working because they're really coming and they're saying, I've been looking for this, you know, my whole life. I can't believe it. And so it's it's amazing. It's very tangible work. And, you know, it's just so cool to meet everybody and and hear their stories and then like help them kind of in the next, you know, path to where they want to go. So yeah, it's an honor. I love it. We're a small but mighty team. <laughs> Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Caroline Chambers. Ah. <laughs> 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 so I do have a question about that. So you spoke about how you um, you said that you were helping people that are overseas in Spain and whatnot. So are you speaking on more of the transitional portion of it, the in the section yeah. where you're talking about the DoD skill bridge, or are you talking about you actually help to train the troops? Like, do you you guys get yeah. that? So, yeah. So I'm, well, I was specifically referring to our skill bridge program. So okay. we were actually. Um, it's funny because I used to work out at MDI with Director Nichols. That's how we met. I was coaching a kids group, and he had his workout group, and. I joined and became a trainer and we've been friends ever since. And, you know, I see him as a mentor and actually he, once he joined F45, he was like, you gotta come join F45. And he literally texted me every day all summer, but I was in this like really intensive um, Olympic training coaching program. And I'm like, as soon as I finish my last day and I graduate, I'm joining. And I did, I walked in and I didn't even do the trial. I'm like, just, I can't get another text message. Like just sign me up. And we literally would work out in the mornings with our fitness family and then we'd go over to Starbucks and like do mentorship. And he would just tell me, oh my gosh, that's a good idea. Da, 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 da. 
And we started talking about it and like, you know, kind of like, how are we going to do this? Like, you got to like apply to the Department of Defense and there's all these like legalities and it's like, how do we put this innovative program and vision in these sort of some antiquated kind of, you know, you know, right. 120 page government documents. And we gotta, started kind gotta of- Gotta love it, gotta love it. And we were like, it's okay. <laughs> I'm like, we're gonna do it. But so we applied, I, I'll never forget. It was the week of the whole COVID thing. Like the world stopped. I remember it was raining like so hard, like it never rains in San Diego. And we literally were like, okay, I think we got this. Let's just launch it. We got it. We said a prayer and we're like, okay, you know, if it's your will, God, like, let it be. And we launched it and we've just been like learning as we go, but we were so proud because they approved us. The U.S. Department of Defense loved our program. They saw our vision, they invested in what we were investing in service members, and they approved us for all branches of service. And then from there, we've just been able to, you know, reach out to different service members. But yeah, so our, our DOD approved skill bridge program is primarily for active duty service members who are within 180 days of separating. It's also available and open to guard reserve to military spouses and also to veterans, um, depending on, you know, if there's room goes first to active duty. Um, and yeah, so we've been basically able to serve active duty service members all over the world that are, you know, stationed at U.S. installations overseas. Right. And so the power of Zoom, you know, uh, Chaz holds like virtual trainings with candidates all over the world. Um, so there's a oh. lot we've been able to do, like just leveraging all these amazing, you know, all this amazing technology. And again, as Director Nichols touched on, you know, our internal platform, our, our technology is what has allowed F45 not only to pivot during the pandemic, but it's allowed us to reach and train service members all over the world, right? We know that we can provide the same training, the same F45 programming modalities to them in Spain, right? And the other piece of that is because we have these civilian studios everywhere, we're able to place candidates potentially in Spain, right? Like if someone's mm -hmm. 50 miles of their, their installation. Awesome. And then some of our folks are actually, you know, they're getting permissive leave to actually come back stateside and re locate into the community they want to live in with their family or start their life and we're able to place them in the i know it's crazy it's it's so yeah crazy. that's what i'm talking about every, every so basically Friday. six months before you leave the military you can get orders to move back to wherever you're going to move to <laughs> and spend the last six months working for f45 while you transition out of the military in the community that you're going to live come on Hey, that's what I'm talking about, people. That's <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good deal to me. You know what I'm saying? What if I got more than six months? What if I got like, I don't know, three years and six months? Does that work? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, For you, actually, so we've been trying to push to start early because there's a lot of like education they can do in advance, a lot of things in advance. So then they can just get in there, get in the studio and get like rolling, you know? So there's lots of things we really encourage people to apply early. We have some that are like two years out and they're like, I'm ready. <laughs> no, we, we, we actually have a Marine that just came through. Uh, he doesn't get out to 2024. He came through yesterday. Uh, but he said, hey, I'm getting ready to retire in the next couple of years. Uh, I'm looking at this F-45. He submitted, you know, the reality of it is, is Military service is going to end no matter what. What you do after service and how you apply those skill sets mm. is what really is going to define you. So Chris, I wanna I wanna pick up on what he said. I'm glad Director Nichols brought this up because you know they already know what I'm gonna say, but I have to say it. <laughs> say it. They, I, look, I just got to, I just need to speak. So I'm just gonna speak it. All right, here we go. So listen, I'm the poster child for this program. This didn't exist when I was about to get out. Um, I, went, I went into service as a transition from two years of college with Air Force ROTC, I might add. Then I went active duty Navy because Air Force enlisted said, the MOS you want is not available. You can wait. I was like, you know what? I ain't trying to wait. I, need I got to time for that. <laughs> I go, right? So he's like, he says, well, we got to build it. They'll drop you. They'll, they'll make an E3 by the time you finish boot camp. I said, so let's go had no plan other than I wanted to get out. So what did I do? While I was in service, I started looking at other opportunities. I've always been an entrepreneur uh, before I knew what that was back in the, the 80s, early 90s. I didn't know what that was. I just knew I wanted to do something for myself. I didn't really want to work for whoever the man was at the time. I wasn't interested in that. So I started looking at ways I could build a career for myself while I was still in active duty. And I got very, very fortunate. And I tell people all the time, you don't, you don't get lucky, you make your luck. And so I started talking about what I wanted to do outside of when I was on my ship. And I'd go work out, go hang out. And I went and fell into an exercise class one day. Okay. And I started working out with this guy and he's like, hey man, you, you're pretty good at this. And I'm just working out, just like what Michael said. He was like, why don't you come on up and just kind of hang out with me a little bit. Okay. So I started going, next thing I know, I got my own class. Next thing I know, I got three classes. 
Next thing I know, I got to go to my CEO's office and ask for permission to work in the civilian world because I was still active duty and you're not really technically supposed to do that. And I cannot believe this, I kid you not. My XO was like, Rogers, you're a squared away sailor, go. He gives me a chit. Bye. <laughs> yeah. I'm out, right? So, and I started doing that with morale, welfare, and recreation. So why did I bring this up? So for service members that are out there listening to this right now, okay? Um, both Director Nichols and I have similar path. I was actually stationed in New Orleans uh, for six months on a, on a tanker uh, generalization. Okay. I also, I also decommissioned uh, one of the last uh, ASR amphibious submarine rescue vessels uh, for the U.S. Navy. In my boot camp, I was the company stickman. I was number one. Uh, and I was actually held over an extra couple of weeks because I was that good at leadership for uh, at my Navy boot camp. So why, the, why that is important is the leadership stuff you get from your time in service, especially when you go through training, helps you propel you into what you might want to do for a company or in our case in fitness. Now we already know everybody in the military has to PT, right? right? Even if they don't like it. When a DI to CC says drop and give it, you best drop and give it. Yep. And so, you know, that's the skill set that we bring to F45 as coaches. These guys already know how to PT. It's in the, believe me, it's burned in your memory. I don't care how fat and out of shape you get. <laughs> yeah, fat. you remember muscle memory, son. <laughs> muscle memory kicks in. If you need to run, if you need to run two clicks, you go run two clicks. So why is that important? So when you go into these trainings for us with the skill based uh, system that we set up, we've eliminated all the failure. All you've got to do is recall what you've already been trained to do, and then we give you steps. As, as Director Nichols and our team always says, we break it down potato head style. All you, have to head do, <laughs> all you have to do is be about it. And we got you the rest of the way. Now, what does that mean? There's over 400 open coaching positions at F45 as we speak in real time today. Okay. Who's up? Let's go. Yep. Hey, tell, that's what I'm telling them. Just like I tell everybody else. Oh, yeah, I was going to do this. Or I was going to support. I was pull up. You know what I'm saying? Be about what you talk about. Pull up. No, stand up for attention. Don't, don't talk about it. Be about Be it. Up. Facts. Absolute facts. I'm still like, I'm still glistening from this whole shock and awe of this because this interview is like perfect. This, this, this is literally like a perfect experience. Like, a, a, you know, some service members, some, you know, the great company of F45 and just all the associates just like, you guys are great. I can tell that you guys have a phenomenal brand. Now, I've only ran into maybe two locations that I've seen because I went back to Arizona and I was like, what is this? This wasn't here before. And I was like, F45. And it's like, it's so weird because then I end up talking to you. I was like, he mentioned F45. I was like, what? So I put two and two together. I was like, there's no way. It's like right by my house. Yeah. So I was like, that, that is awesome. And Chris, what's great about that, um, just really quickly, as we said before, so there's about 350 or so um, new studios about to come online between 2021 and the beginning of 2022. Um, they, we're, we're not blowing smoke here, brother. This is real. There's an opportunity. Uh, as Director Nichols has said, many times in some of our huddles, when we do our team huddles, we, we fully expect to infiltrate with great master trainers with military backgrounds from all branches of service, the entire F-45 network because we're just that good at it. We, we can do this, we can help people change their lives. Uh, one of our slogans in the company is life-changing team training. We come from a team training background, <laughs> service members, all right? You know, I like that, uh, I'm gonna clip that too. That's what it is, right? So, so, you know, we say, if you really wanna do this, we we have the roadmap for you. All you gotta do is get in the car and let's go for a ride. Put your seatbelt on though. Yeah, because it's gonna be quick. Get your insurance, you know. So make sure you got gas. That's all good, that's all good, right? But that's how we do it. Right? So again, we've eliminated your excuses, and we talk to veteran service members all the time. Now, as the director will tell you, we ain't gonna sit here and hold your hand now. All right, we gonna we gonna give you we gonna give you a hand up. We're not giving you a hand out. You're gonna have to from from the, from, the, from the time you engage us, we're gonna assist you in that. Listen. Everything I've ever gotten in my life, all the people that mentored me, gave me a choice. I had two choices, go, stay, choose. Mm, I love that. That's I it. I love that. Yeah, that's actually a really good segue because I can even sweeten the sweeten the pot here. We actually- Sweeten it up. <laughs> sweeten it up. We have 
basically everything that we've designed is like this seamless as Chaz Rogers, my colleague likes to say seamless. We made it seamless. <laughs> <laughs> We actually have designed our program in addition to the skill bridge program, which we told you about for active duty. We also have a program that hopefully is within days or weeks of getting approved by the U.S. Department of Labor and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. We've been working on this baby for almost almost a year okay. <laughs> and we're in the final stages and it's going to be a two plus year master fitness trainer program. So it's a registered apprenticeship program through like the apprenticeship program that was designed way back like early 1900s to help people get into professions and get the education and support they need to get into different professions. Right. And uh, designed a program where you could basically start in the SkillBridge program and then get get done. The number one goal of our SkillBridge program is to get you trained, get you certified, get you you know mentored so that you can get in front of ownership to be considered for employment. That's our number one goal, get you employed, right? Hopefully with that 45, that's the goal. And then from there, you have an opportunity to actually see if your, your studio, your studio owner will actually host you for a two plus year apprenticeship program where you get paid the whole time, you work in the studio, and then you take some classes towards becoming a master fitness trainer through ISSA College, and you get scheduled wage increases every six months. So you finish a class, you keep doing what you need to do to be a great trainer in the studio and you get a guaranteed wage increase. And then the reason we work so hard to get it to try to get it approved by the Department of Labor and the VA is so that it unlocks all these benefits for service members. So you would be able to not only you know use your GI Bill to pay for your certifications, you would get your housing allowance, money for books, and you're getting paid to work. So we're trying to basically see, you know, you've worked so hard, you've earned all these things for serving your country. And how can we make sure that you get to take full advantage of all these benefits that you earn while you're you know continuing to advance your career in the fitness industry and you know we know there'll be some that the trajectory too will look like ownership you know that's we've created incentives for that as well so we really are about taking someone you know a service member who's finishing up service helping them take that next step to get into a career in the fitness industry keep them training get them get them a degree if they want to get a degree and then maybe they can become an owner themselves and pay it back forward to other service members so we actually have some um veterans that are becoming owners and are opening going to be opening their doors to actually mentor and bring in the youngins that are coming in so you know everything we've designed is about paying it forward you know about taking everything that we've all learned and seeing how we can apply that and serve service members basically so we're excited we just like start start here and you can go wherever you want to go <laughs> well, thanks definitely <laughs> that's amazing honestly because you know I, i've seen i'm not gonna mention any names but i've seen some other like companies or brands that it just yeah they're about you know the veteran community but there's always that like that little that little pinch that's like mm, i don't know about that one but you know like i said just just knowing uh from what i've seen uh you know from mike and just listening to you guys speak today and just you know kind of doing a little bit of research on the f45 brand um i am so happy to say you know i'm saying that you guys are you know a company out there that's supporting the vets you guys actually genuinely care about us and you care about what we do when we get out because let's be honest you know all too often when we hear about people, uh, veterans uh, transitioning out, you hear so much about the suicide rate. You hear about the can't find the job rate. And granted, there's a lot that are like surviving and, and doing great. So I'm not saying all veterans, but just all too often you hear about that. But then we have people like you guys that come along and that genuinely care about the well-being and transitioning of our vets. Um, like I said, I, I appreciate that because that's what I'm trying to do here with my podcast and, and just getting word out that we yeah. are more than just active duty service members or people that served in the military we we can be great anywhere yeah we just need a hand up that's yeah. it we need a hand Rick up Nichols came to me about a year and a half ago with this and, and i can tell you right now uh michael and i've known each other as 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 friends and fathers of, 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 of great kids uh in our community here in san diego before we ever started working together but what i got to tell you is this i'd be remiss if i didn't say so um he could have called anyone and he probably he may have I don't know. Uh, but probably, <laughs> check that phone list. Check that phone list. He might have pulled out his roller deck. He might have said, "No, nah, no, nah, I ain't doing that." He was like, "Oh, <laughs> fine," you know. <laughs> He's like, All right, damn, I had to call Chess. Uh, but what I what I will tell you is, um, you know, what what I appreciate about this opportunity is when I started in fitness. Part of my fitness journey was I was going to help. I wanted to help kids. And that's, I, I'm a writer and I'm a master trainer because of that, because I felt it was important to help some of these kids in fitness learn how to do things the right way and not learn how to do it as the adults would do it, but learn how to do it at a kid's level. So Michael and I have coached our sons together in sports and he knows my style when it comes to working with kids. Right. But I'd always- Lots, lots of screaming and yelling. Ah! 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 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. But uh, but but what we what we was what we talked about on the call before I even before I had the first meeting with his with his leadership team at F45 before I was brought on was the fact that this was really going to change the lives of people like us. Okay, I felt strongly that that that's what pulled me into this. The fact that I can help more people like us um, and also their kids through you know other things. And we've got a kids program we'll talk about another time through F45 now. But more importantly, you know, people like myself and Michael and others that have, and yourself that have come through service, civilians really don't understand us, man. They really don't. Uh, they don't get it. They don't get the sense of mission. They don't get the sense of drive. They don't get any of that. Now, Carol Ann does because she's married to a former military guy, uh, but she was a spouse, not she didn't serve. But when you serve, it is, it is, it's just a different calling. And so we, I felt really important when after that phone call, and I hung it up and I went to my wife and I said, look, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this. She says, well, what is that? I says, I'm not quite sure, but Michael called me. So I'm going to do more digging. And I did a bunch of digging just like he knew I would. And I said, yeah, I'll come up and meet with you guys. More importantly than that is every single time we do a training, man, every single time, especially when we're live with our candidates, our participants, we've gotten almost about 20 trainers that have come through the F45 program. And we're less than a year old now, hired right now in real time, working as, you know, as career fitness coaches. I got one getting hired next week from this program, from Director Nichols Vision. So I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that. It's a huge thing, man. This is real. And this is this is tangible. And it is accessible if you want to change whatever your what's next is, right? And if it doesn't work out with us, that's fine. But we know we, we we're going to be prepared when you go into the market uh, through F45 Training and Veterans Impact Program. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah, so like, I know you got, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Caroline. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, um, I have won the boot camp challenge, the MCRD boot camp challenge a few times. So if I could go back, I definitely would have been a Marine. I didn't grow up in a, in a family where military was really like ever an option for me or at the time. But I definitely, you know, can identify in a lot of different ways with military. I also volunteer with a military group um, uh, that team red, white and blue that supports military service members that are transitioning out into the world and the civilian world. And we encourage them through fitness and things like that. So I'm all about doing, you know, crazy runs and crazy rucks and hikes and things like that. And, you know, I've always been a very um, competitive athlete and fitness has been the center of my life and coaching has been the center of my life. And I feel like I can inspire military that way. But I think, you know, it all comes down to, I think the thing that we all share is number, you know, we love, we have passion, we've got in our life, we have a passion for fitness, we have a passion for serving others. You know, when Michael and I were sitting down and talking about, about about all of this, I said, you know, I've always chosen everything I've ever done professionally in my life. I chose it because my heart told me that's what I should be doing. Even if it wasn't the most lucrative, most well-paying job, I chose it because I believed in the mission. I believed in the vision. And I, I know the only way I can ever give all of myself, all my passion, my energy, everything is if I believe in what we're doing. And I believe it's making a positive impact on people's lives. And I just talking about this every morning at mentorship at 5 a.m. <laughs> over at Starbucks, back when we got to sit in the coffee <laughs> house, the Poor Starbucks. Hey. The house. <laughs> you know, the good old days. And we would talk and we would just, and I, I honestly, like I've, I've been a te I was a teacher. I still am a coach. And honestly sitting there every morning, it was like the most exciting thing, like of my whole day. Like we would talk about the veterans impact program and the vision and F45 and how are we going to do this and who we have to partner up and how are we going to really reach the most service members and impact them, you know, and how are we going to share our love for fitness and our, and our love for all these things with these service members and how are we going to do it? You know, and we sat down, we figured out what, what is the right way to go? And, you know, we had some, okay maybe it's this way maybe we go over here to the right or back to the left and honestly we're creating this roadmap as we go but it's you know working with the service members you know now that we're in, in action and we're meeting with service members we keep trying to make it better and we'll hear something that works or doesn't work and we'll change it up and we'll incorporate new things but i can tell you like it's been just the most incredible like life-changing team training life-changing adventure for me <laughs> To be a part of, you know, this team and this mission. I mean, every day we're meeting with these service members and they're little, I'm crying, they're crying. And I'm like, ah, and it's just like, it's, it's so rewarding. It's so tangible, you know, and oh, I just, she cries a lot, man. Don't, don't, it's I, not I don't, <laughs> don't put her out there like that. Come on, you know, don't, don't do it like that. <laughs> I definitely feel like damn Navy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but yeah, no, I definitely feel like, you know, that's what we're doing and, and, and 
I'm just excited to see like where we're even going to be back, you know, where we're going to be in a year from now. Like I'm amazed with everything we've been able to accomplish so far, you know, even during the pandemic. And I'm just so excited too, to see like, now we're going to be rolling out at MCS Miramar that's happening like right now. And uh, we'll be launching our first cohort there and within the next you know few weeks. And I'm just like, this is just, it's, it's, I always say epic, but that's how it feels. You know, every Friday I'm like, it's another epic week team. <laughs> But I, I can tell you, it's so fun to be a part of a space where you have the support of F45 and you, they just tell you, yeah, you believe in it, you wanna do it, you think it's a good cause, it's gonna help a lot of people, write it, create it, develop it, make it happen. And I feel like where else in your life, a lot of people don't have that opportunity, especially in their job, to go every day and have a vision and a mission and have the support of a company like F45 and just be able to go do it. And then to see how you're paying it forward to all these people, you know, and you're giving that to other people who we hope will then come and mentor others you know, along the way as well. So that's my bit, you know, I just, I'm, I'm excited and we're just getting started. So I, I can tell wait. you're excited. You can't stop smiling. <laughs> Come back to you with like, oh, Chris, and we're like, okay, now look, we've done this, this, and this. <laughs> so I, Chris, I don't know if we, we said this yet, but we're placing our very first F-45 on Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. Like on that, what? On the base. So basically hey, the, you and mccs going out y'all gonna be putting the mitts on you know what i'm saying just uh, <laughs> I'm just, all good hey hey so mccs will own the uh f45 franchise and basically we will help train and educate their trainers to run it and since we have the skill bridge on base we will be able to utilize our interns to run the classes so they can learn through the process of so it's a no-brainer. So we can help with we can help with two things. Number one, combat readiness to help them prepare for combat, and we can help them transition readiness. And not not many other companies can say they can do that. That's hey, I I, I like the way you do that, man. I, I I peep like certain things that you guys are doing. And first of all, because obviously you 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 do believe in the brand, you do believe in the company. But uh, I, I like the way you throw those subtle things out there, and that's why we're the best. You know, it's like that. That, that punchline right there. I love it. Look, the, the reality of it is, is uh, we have a unique opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. It's not about money. It's about the mission. If you take care of the people, the people will take care of the money. A lot of people get that so screwed up in life. Like I wasn't making X so much money in Louisiana, but I was personally and professionally drained. Uh, I came back and I've given my life to help service members and for the last 10 years trying to figure out how to do that and we're finally doing it and it's been a 10 year journey but it's been the hardest but the most rewarding journey I've ever seen. I could sit here in the last in the last 60 days we've had 72 inquiries coming in from around the world uh, people stationed at Camp Lejeune, uh, Camp Pendleton, Honolulu, Hawaii, uh, Day Daytona, Ohio. North Folk, Virginia. I, I'm look. I'm literally reading live, real time. Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, Ridgecrest, California, Jacksonville, North Carolina, um, Tucson, Arizona, Olivehurst, California, Jacksonville, North Carolina, Honolulu, Hawaii, Camp Pendleton. Uh, you name it, and, and the list. Go, this is the last sixty days. So, I'm telling you, it's a game changer, and I believe in the next five years we'll have a f45 studio on every military base around the world and we'll become the number one uh service member employer uh for people leaving the military let's let's go this is how you should dream you dream big it's not a dream like oh we might get one or two big we got everything son <laughs> everybody you know what i'm saying we want all of it hawaii 29 pounds that's us <laughs> Hey, so Chris, Anchorage, got, Alaska, you name it. I'm hey, Chris, you, I, got, crazy. I got one for you. I got one for you because it was, it was a showstopper in the last call we had a couple of days ago. A dream without a T is superfluous. Yes. <laughs> that, is a, that is a Staff Sergeant Nichols original. Right. You made me look that word up. Superf what you say? Superfluous? <laughs> it's not even a real word. <laughs> I'm a T. You got me all the way, man. Hey, t this is for you, sir. But the guy, the guy, the guy, was, the guy stopped in his tracks and said, "Damn, 
Yeah, like, I, told, like, I told Director Nichols, you just have to, he I said, is that, because I'm, you know, I'm the academic development officer. He's like, this is even a real, because we were like, yeah, superfluous, you know, we're owning it, you know, everyone's like, yeah, I'm, like, that. I'm putting that on a caption. And then he was like, is that a real world word? I'm like, no, but just own it, no. you know? Like, it'll get you max points, you know, and Scrabble, just own it, you know? Are you talking to Siri, Siri, look up superfluous. <laughs> I was, I was this morning. <laughs> Not find words. What does she say? I will do no such thing. You know better. <laughs> well, what Rick Rick was, thought it was, That's right. Well, Rick Rick thought it was they sat there you know? and they were like, "Wow, that's great!" And it yeah, was yeah. just, that, and everybody stopped. They were like, <laughs> "Yeah, a dream without a team is superfluous." Look, dreams are good, but you right. got to surround yourself with an amazing team to help you give birth to that dream. Because if you don't, the reality of it is it's never going to happen. You know, a lot of people, some of the That's greatest true. inventions in the world are in the graveyard and they never, they never came to pass because no one was willing to persevere. A lot of people are in, inspired to do a lot of things, but without commitment, you would never get through to the other side. And so I can honestly say that 10 years of testing and trying and I mean, you name it, I've done it. I've I've written books, manuals. I got things on DVD, CDs. I've done it all, and I failed forward. I didn't fall, fail backwards. I failed forward, meaning that all of those ten years of hard work trying to figure out the VIP program was in preparation for what we're doing here at F45. And a lot of people say, "Oh, I tried it once. It didn't work. I tried it twice. It didn't work." Well, you're not me. Quit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You quit. ain't me. They quit and give up. And the reality of it is, is without perseverance, they're never going to get to where they're supposed to be. Failure is inevitable. Here we go. Here's a quote. Failure is inevitable. Progress is optional. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Yo, yeah. hold up. Because my brain is like, you, you oh, say it again. literally said so many quotables in this one episode. It's So here, here it is. Failure is inevitable progress is optional drop the mic yeah mike drop the mic <laughs> mike drop the mic <laughs> we call him the preacher by the way that's his that was his nickname in the yeah, that's my call yeah that was my call sign in iraq so preacher. when i gave my life to christ and, you know, god just giving me the passion to preach when, preach hey, chris preach. you get to the pulpit brother just you know just just have your, <laughs> just have your amens on hand now yeah <laughs> Just have them ready, you know, because you're going to say amen a few times. Um, I got to tell you something that's important because, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever had this question when you were doing your research on, on the program, but I got to share this with you because we did some research and we, we like to throw out numbers in real time. There are 201,000 fitness organizations across the globe. Guess who's the only one working with the active duty military? And veterans in the United States. You want to? I bet you're a guest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at 45? <laughs> at 45, baby, where you at? That's what's up. Let's go. So check this out, right? Think about this for a second. I've been in fitness almost 30 years. I've had ideas to do stuff with military and everything, and I have trained a lot of people in the military. But there are companies, and, and Michael can talk about this. There are companies that tried to get with the military, but all they wanted to do to get with the military was do business and sell them a bunch of stuff. Oh, you know, yeah. So they're looking at you like, uh, mm, no. <laughs> it's with them. That's one of their favorite things. Oh, you're getting yours. What do I get? Right. So he looked at this and said, okay, why don't we partner with the military? And when he went to F-45 and talked to them, I said, we're going to partner with the military. Whatever that takes, are you willing to back us on that? And they said, yes. And that's how the MCR, this is how, you know, the Miramar Bay Studios come into fruition. Because now, once we get one, guess what happens? Yeah. What happens? The okay. CEO is looking Anything at this wants going, one, oh, yes. Palms wants one. Let's go. How do I get one? And how much? cool too, you know, is that we're able to offer F45 to the community there, right, for free. They're running it, right? We're training them how to run it for the community. And then we also get right. to use training ground, right? So we get to have you know, our SkillBridge interns come in and learn like on base in that space. Like it's, it's amazing. It's like, it's amazing, <laughs> so, but it's really about, in, you know, putting it into the community. We talk about going into the community, you know, standing that up and then using that as a, a training ground. So it's, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. It seems like you're trying to help the, the community to be self-sufficient rather than just take over. 
And the, the other thing I wanted to ask, so are you guys looking to do any type of, um, I know you said you're going to the different bases, you were in Miramar, but are you guys ever thinking about doing MCRD San Diego or Paris Island? So kind of a quick little uh, tie in with that. So at, at and then Quantico for OCS that, you know, they have uh, different people come in from like the, the, what is it? The British, I think the, the British Marines and they come in and they kind of create the PT program for OCS, uh, the officer candidate school. Are you looking to do something like that to where you guys are like kind of a foundation of recruit training as well to help like revamp the recruit training? Uh, I think that that's a long-term goal. The most important, uh, our most important uh, steps are really just helping servicemen and women at this point. Uh, the bases that reach out to us and we're able to place F45 Studios on base to help with combat readiness, that's amazing. Uh, but on the flip side of that is the transitional readiness. And I, I honestly believe uh, in, in due season, uh, time and chance will come together where we, are, we will be able to leverage F-45's technology and the ability to articulate the programming at the gold standard and tying that into military specific programming into the F-45 network. And we will have basically create the curriculums, software, programming, tie it together, and we'll be able to articulate that message. And we'll be able to have the same results at every single base around the world. So the problem we have in the military, and I, you know, I was a trainer, I was an instructor, I was a drill instructor, uh, is you come into the training facility, you learn how to be an NCO, staff NCO, a DI. But when you go out to articulate that message, it's different everywhere. It's, Back. you know what I mean? Back. That's a fact. What we, what F45 is uh, very uh, unique about and how we do things is leveraging technology to deliver the first class experience a around the globe. So out of the 2000 studios around the globe, everyone's doing the same workout around the globe and receives the same experience the instructors are icing on the cake, meaning that regardless if the instructors are good instructors or terrible instructors, it's the same regiment. Yeah. It's the same regiment through programming, technology, and TV. So I believe that time and chance will come together and we'll be able to leverage our technology with military programming, put it on the TV, and articulate the same message at every base around the globe. So, Chris, just to pick up on what Director Nichols is telling you, is what this is what's really important about this fact. It's huge. As you know, as you know, uh, our servicemen and women, first of all, the, the force is smaller than it was. When I went in, it was twice the size it is today. Right. Uh, I, I was actually part of the first drawdown of troops and and, and sailors across the board uh, when our commander in chief was uh, President Bill Clinton. Uh, I literally got out early because of that initiative. And so they Hold on, bro. Hold on. You <laughs> I'm sorry. Cause I gotta <laughs> He's old. He's Yo, hold on. I got on. <laughs> that caught me off guard because I got on mic for him saying 95, 96. Now you talking about uh, Bill Clinton? <laughs> hold up. <laughs> what, brother? Listen, man, hey. You know, get that, get, get that dirt off your shoulders. You know, so, uh. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So what happened was they decided they they started sending out these offers to everybody, the, the, the entire fleet. Hey, uh, we're drawing down. If you're a short timer and you don't plan on re upping, you know, go. I go back to the base about three years later as a civilian just working and I'm watching all these guys walk around and they're not in the best of shape. Mm. What's going on. They have literally stopped PTN. We used to we used to be on the grinder at 0530. Okay? Especially if we was in port five days a week mm. without fail. And they they stopped all that. Like the guys weren't staying in shape. They weren't being conditioned. I don't know what it was like for the Marines. I can just tell you what it was like for the Navy. And you're right. I, I was ashamed. I'm like, Are you serious? Because I worked on a dive ship. So that conditioning and that process was ingrained in me from from my time as an athlete in grade, in grade school, high school, and then in college into the Navy. I was never ever really out of shape. So to watch somebody walk around in the uniform. And not look all about it. I'm like, what? What is that? So, so we're able to take F45 even a little bit deeper, Chris. So, what we're working on right now 
is creating a leadership dashboard. Sorry, that's my my puppy. Oh, not uh, a, oh, a creates Belgian a good Malinois. So we're creating a <laughs> we're gonna create a leadership dashboard so that platoon commanders, platoon sergeants, and uh, company commanders, battalion commanders, they'll be able to log on. So every time you show up to an F forty five workout, it yeah. registers into a leadership dashboard, and you can track your troops' workouts and their output on every workout that they work out at F45. So we'll do it. We'll do it for uh, uh, Miramar and then we'll start implementing and rolling that out so we can truly quantify combat readiness. And, you know, like just really taking, you know, you know, let's be real. Fitness has been around forever, uh, ah. but, but the ability <laughs> to leverage the ability to leverage technology and fitness together can really quantify and, and and quantify the output that's required to really perform in a combat scenario. It's an absolute game changer, Chris, because what it's going to do now is for those for those sailors, those Marines, those Army infantry people who were struggling a touch with their conditioning, uh, we, we're going to we have a great opportunity here to eliminate that. Right. A great opportunity for those that are going to be up or looking at their fitness, because again, uh, we had a talk uh, not too long ago with the, the Army of Singapore, and they they had a they have a major problem. With because everybody that gets in does their two years full time and then they go be civilians and they come back. Well, the problem when they was coming back was they was deconditioned, they was living a civilian life and they weren't as fit. So they saw us look at something during the beginning of the pandemic that Director Nichols came up with. We rolled out at home workouts for okay. service members, right? We did that for a while and F45 supported it. And it was genius. Two reasons. One, I can't go to the gym, I'm stuck at home. You still got to move. Yeah, you still don't get this work. Uh, listen, you get right. out of it that quick. Yeah. Mm. You, you can't go buy a brand new <laughs> uniform at Nordstrom's Rack because you didn't drop, you didn't add 20 pounds because of COVID-19. No, 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 no. See, that doesn't work. And so we're looking at this saying there's a practical application to how we do this. It's a really practical application. Fitness is a very, is every day a part of a military person's life. Now, when they get out, we talked about suicide rates. The one thing that studies have shown, if Military personnel who have PTS or something like that, and I went to a I went to a camp on this. Right. If you just move your body, even a little bit, it, it releases the, your brain stop that cloud goes away and you start feeling better. I know for me, I'm a pain in the you know what, if I don't get to train at least three, four times a week, I can't stand it. These guys ah. I don't mm -hmm. sit down very long. I'm not good at it because I've always been on the move, right? They can tell you, I, I am the operations and performance officer for a reason, because I don't like sitting behind a desk for too long. This is actually the longest we've had him in front of the computer in a while, so thank you, Chris. <laughs> hey, just big shout out to Veteran Info the podcast for me once again. We, we brought another first to the platform, you know? <laughs> first, first. I know, we just gotta bring you on, Chris. We wanna set it down. And it's documented for goodness sakes. <laughs> but just to, wrap, just to kind of yeah, just to wrap this up really quickly, what we really feel strongly about, and the director and I have talked about this, and so is our ADL, not just about the movement and the fitness and everything, but the application in writing, hard copy. Hey, is this real? Yes, it is. Here's here's the manual that shows you it's real, because that's one of the other issues with the military. They want facts. They want data. Otherwise, they're like, man, kick rocks. So I think one of the one of the things I'd like to share while I'm thinking about it, uh, team, is that a lot of service members really struggle with with getting back to being who they who they are. Uh, they get caught up in the rank, uh, staff NCO, gunnery sergeant, master gunnery sergeant, whatever the case may be. And look, I'll be the first one to tell you that for a couple of years I struggled because how do you balance from going being this hardcore Marine Corps drill instructor? Uh, motivating and inspiring people to be in the civilian and figuring out one of the toughest challenges we face as a service organization helping service members transition out of militaries helping them get back to being Michael uh, not Staff Sergeant Nichols you know a, a lot of people know me as Staff Sergeant Nichols but honestly people that meet me like oh my god I would never known you were a Marine Corps drill sergeant I try not to carry myself that way that's you know like you know, the civilian sector needs your leadership and what the military has taught you. They don't need your rank. You know, if 
your rank is important to you, you need to stay in the military. But eventually, that rank has to come off, and you got to move on and figure out who. What does Michael like? What does he enjoy doing? And you know, and we really work really hard to help the servicemen and women realize that.、Uh, let's get back to let's get back to the basics. Let's let's use utilize this military skill set for the good, and let's dump the bad, whatever it, that bad is, like smoking and drinking and cursing and the bad, the bad, the bad. Right? That's what happens quite often. Um, that stuff serves. That stuff serves you well,、uh, Chris. When you, you know, obviously when you're in the service, that's great, and that builds that camaraderie, that brotherhood, or that sisterhood if you're service members. But to Director Nichols,、um, you know, eloquent point that this, this, this needs to be said. What we've learned cannot be removed from us. What we were trained when we were, when we first showed up in boot camp, and and they stripped us of what we were as civilians, and they and they conditioned us and they trained us. And then when we transition out, there's not a lot of programming for how to get out and go back, right? Just just right. Not, so let's remember that there's nothing, almost nothing. And so all of us、uh, who have served have had to figure out the, our best way forward. What I love about what we're doing, at least with this program, I can only speak to our skill bridge and not anybody else's. We don't just get you in and let you go. We get you in. We mentor you. We coach you. We give you information. We check in. I get 15 to 20 texts a day from people in our in our network, just checking in with them, seeing how they're doing.、Um, it's unique to us, but I will tell you that it has served us because our our, our I, I believe wholeheartedly that our candidates and participants have graduated, have gone in and started working for the network are successful today because of the mentorship that's rolled into every single thing we do every single day we do it. These two will tell you this is important. I don't know what the other programs do, and I can't speak to that. But I can tell you, Chris, 100% to your listeners, you get involved with us, we got you. <laughs> got you. Well, and also I think like effort, you know, all that camaraderie and everything that you, you, you experience in the in service. Also, like F45 is all about that. Like you come in, we're gonna get you in. By the way, Chris, <laughs> for a workout for sure. We're gonna、oh, baptize that. Yeah, we baptize.、Sure. I don't know because you see these things right here. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know the environment is really good. I see nothing. <laughs> oh, that's how you feel. All right, bet. Say no more. <laughs> We're gonna have to pop his heart. <laughs> we'll see what's up. But for real though, you know the environment is just. I mean, if you once you come in, you'll see it. Like it's just we're loud. You know, when we, before COVID, we always had live DJs for the workouts on Saturday. Like I remember walking in and being like. I can't believe it's 7 a.m. on Saturday morning, and it's like we're in a club, you know, <laughs> like, and it's just this high energy, like very motivating environment. And so I think it's a great, you know, for some of our service members, it's hard, you know, they come out and they're very, especially some of our Marines. I mean, we had a Marine that showed up to one of our meet and greets, and he was just like, literally the entire meeting was standing like in formation. I feel like like Marine, and we're like, okay, we're gonna have to work to kind of take the edge How off there. How long was he in for? <laughs> What、I、was that? He's been in. How long was How long? he? Yeah, I tell you right now. Hold on. I won't tell you his name for the <laughs> privacy. Green all the way. Chris, just put it this way: he was straight as a board, brother. Oh my gosh! <laughs> the whole was he just looking around, just mean mugging? Like, dude, dude, he was straight as a board. Standing like this the whole time, the guns with the, you know, I know y'all pin your shirts and all that. And Listen, I don't know about none of that. Listen, I don't know about not Neta. Was <laughs> all. Straight and you know, and、uh, yeah, no, I just I remember I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna have some work to do with this one to kind of take out you know him and help him find his way. But that's five years. It's an environment. Five. five it's an environment. Oh, oh God, five. Hey, take、hey. your own. <laughs> but you know, it's an environment where that's what we try to bring out, and you know, Chaz、yeah. talked about the mentorship, and that's what we share with you know, studio owners will ask us like. So what's you know what's the best way I can mentor him? Like what what are some suggestions for how I can really like help them through this process of becoming a trainer at F45? And I'm like, really, it's about helping them find out who they are, you know. And we have service members that come in and they're more quiet or they're more reserved actually, and we help seeing them like you know blossom, you know, into these like really out there, you know, live and just you know all this stuff. So that's really about what you know. At least F45 is that environment where we kind of put them in and with some mentorship, which with some you know support in that team training environment, we're able to actually bring out you know who's Chris. Who's Michael? Who's Chaz? You know, and now you get to figure out who you are with support, right, and with a path and direction. So I think like F45 is a perfect environment for that because we're just so like out there, high energy. You know, 
and it's, everyone's- it's, it's kind of like it's it's a honestly like i've tried a lot of fitness programs since leaving the military i've been out since 2007 so i've been out for a long time right, right? uh there's a lot of amazing fitness programs out there but i can honestly tell you for me um that it's the closest to the military camaraderie with my f-45 community and family that i used to experience with my marines and i, I have to agree that's an that. amazing feeling i mean for me the only thing i did that was close to what f-45 has created scalable and i might add was right. when i back when i went back to running uh, track and field i was in a master's track and field club and there was probably about 10 15 guys and we would train together like i did when i was in college and that was the only time I felt like, I, I, don't, I, don't, want, I don't know if I'm gonna use the word safe, but I felt like I could be myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I could be myself, I could train and compete and get after it. And I used to just work out on my own and play basketball, but that, you know, it wasn't the same. But I gotta tell you, man, the very first time I did an F45 workout, I was like, oh, that's what's up. Oh, this is home right here. I you think Carol Ann says it extremely elegant. Carol Ann always says that, you know, like we as adults, when we were in high school and college, uh, we're part of a team and then you grow up and you're not part of a team anymore. Yeah. And that 45 gives you a new team, a new family. And, uh, I don't I know exactly what Caroline says, but every time she says it, it's like, yeah, she's right. I mean, yeah, going I back to that, what she said to her point, going back to that thing on the wall, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know the origin of that. I, I think we probably should research it, but that first thing I saw when I walked into my very first F45 studio, and this is before I knew what it was. Right. Uh, I started working for the company. I was, they were a competitor of ours and another venture I was doing. And I walked in and on the wall, it said team training, life changing. I was like, what? Like I didn't get it, right? I mean, I saw it, but I, I get it now. But then I was like, that's kind of cool. That's catchy. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Yeah, but what's it about though? Right, right. And that, you know, <laughs> there's, you know, short well, it. I think too, like one of the things, you know, we ask service members on the, they, we have these candid discovery forms that they fill out when they want to be a part of a program. We're really just trying to kind of get to know them, get to know about their service, their journey, how they got here, different things that they've gone through and, and, and all, and all of that. And, you know, one of the things that most of the service members put, I would say it's 80% of the time they say, you know, what's, we ask them, what's the reason that you joined the military to begin with? And they tell right. us you know, travel, they'll say opportunities, schooling, all this stuff. But most of them say, I want to be a part of something that's bigger than myself. That's why I joined. I want to be a part of something that was bigger than myself. And I, I feel like that is exactly what, you know, for me, even not being military, like that's what F45 is for me. I want to be a part of a fitness family. I want to be a part of a community. I want to be a part of something that's bigger than myself, right? And every day you walk in, you're, you know, when you're also working out, you're inspiring others, you're encouraging others, you know, you're, you're leading by example, you know, you're showing up you know, you're being dependable, you're, there's power and partnership and accountability. And, you know, we literally like a member won't show up and we're like, Dave, Dave, sleeping in, you know, like, and it's, you don't really feel that often as an adult, right? Where people really care and they want to know where were you? Where's Dave been for two days, you know? And that's something that you don't generally get as an adult. And I think that's something that, you know, at 45 and the fitness communities are able to provide. And I feel like it's such a nice, it just is a perfect marriage with military because, you know, they join to be part of something bigger than themselves and they get to be that through F45 too. And now they get to take all these life lessons and experiences, the good, the bad, the hardships, all these things that they experience in their life and through service. And now you get to go into the studio, become a trainer, become a master fitness trainer, become an owner maybe. And you now get to give that back to your community, right? And I mean your fitness community, but also your community, right? Where you're going to start your civilian life, right? And so I feel like it's like that full circle, you know, I get to now be, I was a, joined to be part of something bigger than myself. And now I get to pay that forward and support my community in that same way. So I feel like it's just a perfect tie. And I, I think about that all all the time every time i read that in a service member story i'm like yes like this is going to be such a good fit for you because you get to be some part of something now bigger than yourself even outside of the military so chris check this out this is going to be cool for you. your very first experience when you come work out with us uh, in the uh -oh. studio <laughs> there, there you listen go. you're not slick i know what y'all did you said when there's not it's not if it's oh, when no. but i like that <laughs> we don't use, we don't oh, use that was your fire <laughs> you know, in fact, in fact, one of my dear friends um, is a life coach that we've had come in to speak to our to our candidates. He says, "Listen, man, we don't wait; we just create." So I'm mm -hmm. creating that. I'm speaking it into existence for you, brother. Mm -hmm. You're gonna come work out, and you will see for yourself. You're gonna come back to your constituents and your, your your fans, and you're gonna preach this like tomorrow's gospel. You know why? Because you're gonna feel something you probably haven't felt for a while. 
And that's that team environment. That's that, listen, we all suffer together. The three of us will go and do an event and we'll work out together. And all three of us are sweating, okay? But tell you what, we ain't quitting, we just sweat. We're getting after it and you just, you, you, the collective, right? You thrive off of that energy. So what did you do when you were in the military? Remember when you'd be, when you'd show up for uh, for orders for a command and you know, you'd be addressed by the dignitaries and you're standing in formation and y'all nail, nail the movement, right? You nail everything. That's what it feels like when you work out of that 45 to me. It's like being on a drill deck, knocking out, knocking out, you know, you're the color guard and you nail it. Right, and the CEO sees that he comes up to your to your command and officer says, "Your boys brought the rain today. I appreciate that." And you get that hearty salute. I tell you, man, that's what it feels like when you finish your workout at 45. Because that 45 minutes is no joke. Well, that's 60 minutes, no joke. But you know, you accomplished something when you're done. So imagine being a coach, coaching that, and sharing that. And I do a thing where we talk about energy. Okay. That energy is real. It's not contrived energy. It's real energy. It's the type of energy that we used to get when we would go out and do a mission and, and kick butt. So there you go. Now, I, I love it because I want to ask a, a, a couple of questions real quick because I want to clarify exactly um, some questions about some service, like the services that you guys do. So I know you, you spoke a little bit about doing services online. Is it like you just give them a program and then they do it or do you have somebody on like a FaceTime while you're doing the workout or how does that work for your online services? So multiple, there's multiple questions and I'll try to break this down. Potato head style. Hey, <laughs> or body. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, so, so, so number one, we F45 has its own learning management system. Uh, it's called F45 Academy. Okay. So any trainer that comes into our network has access to our learning management system, which teaches them everything about F45, the F45 modalities and uh, how to implement and execute our workouts. That's number one. Number two is Coach Chaz, uh, master fitness trainer, been in the fitness industry for 30 years. Uh, every Thursday, once a week, he mentors the trainers and gets on a live Zoom with them and talks to them about mentorship and, you know, just basically being a life coach uh, every uh, every Thursday. And once the last Friday of every month, we do a live in-person training here in San Diego at a studio. And uh, we basically bring all of our military uh, personnel that are part of our program to one studio. We work on coaching, how to mentor each other, how to help each other. And it's basically uh, our live counseling session. Let's just be real. We as military people, we need, we need to be in that environment where we have somebody that can understand where we're coming from and help us through those life struggles. So we do that once a month. That's number, that's the third thing. The fourth thing is when it comes to our education and training, as far as our certifications, we have our academic partner who is ISSA college, which is GI bill approved, tuition assistance approved, so on and so forth. So we've developed everything that we, uh, we've created with the service member in mind to ensure that they receive the education and certifications that they need so they can be successful in life. If they decide to utilize our program and not stay with that 45, that's absolutely okay. We, we believe that once we get them under our leadership and under our umbrella, that they will not only stay with us, but they'll grow with us and become master fitness trainers throughout the globe, uh, wherever they end up. And you know, the cool part about it is military servicemen and women have this unique ability to motivate and inspire people. Uh, we, yeah. just need to, we just need to give them the right keys to the right car so they can go out and make a tremendous impact. And we know hands down, based upon the information that's coming in on a daily basis on our military team, that this is gonna be a game changer for servicemen and women. Look, the reality of it is, is most trainers do train part-time because they love to coach and teach and motivate, right? Uh, but if they choose to do this full-time, uh, we have that career path as well. Not only that, but what we're also working on is with our executive leadership team is we have people with a lot of money, but they don't have the skill set that we have. So what we're working on right now is we're going after big investors that want to open up a hundred thousand studios at a time. And we're going to train, educate and mentor the service members that have a passion to become a studio owner. We're going to marry them together. 
And what's going to end up happening is they'll start off running, they'll become the studio manager, and then eventually they'll become a studio owner as long as they meet certain benchmarks. So we're marry marrying the two that have uh, one has the skill sets one and doesn't have the money. One has the money, doesn't have the skill sets. It's a perfect marriage. Oh, I love that. Let's go. <laughs> so for, for the other half, right? So we kind of talked about as far as the service member that, you know, how they kind of uh, fit into the equation. What about the customer? So the customer, how do they go about? Because I know we talked about it. It ain't free. But so how do they go about signing up? for F45 and what kind of online service do you offer them? Well, let me, let me, so, let me grab that. You want to grab it, director? Let me get it. Hey, I, I'll grab, look, rapid fire. Go to F45training.com yeah. and click on find this studio and put in your address and it'll show you the studios uh, within your area. So just for example, uh, there's about 30 studios in the San Diego area that <laughs> you can go on. And, and you, basically the way that most studios offer it, you can try it for seven days for free no harm, no foul. If you want to try it, do it. Awesome. Great. If not, no big deal. Uh, and then serve, because they're independently franchise owned, there's different pricing at different points, but almost not, almost nine out of 10 studios offer military and first responder discounts. So uh, if you are a service member looking to at least just get in an amazing workout or at least get in a jump start for seven days, uh, just try the seven days and and if you don't want to sign up, don't sign up. Uh, it's pretty simple. So during COVID, there's no, you guys are still training during this whole time period. So on the flip side, so you join a studio and if you can't be in the studio, we have line uh, live online Zoom training classes and modalities. So before, before COVID, F45 was an in-studio training facility. When COVID hit in March, Within, within two weeks, our entire organization pivoted to a global uh, virtual platform and, and we're training 800,000 people online almost in two weeks because we had to pivot as an organization. It's, it's amazing what we've been able to do as an organization. And it's really just bringing the right leadership under one umbrella uh, with ha people that have visions and dreams and ideas and da, 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 da and just letting them go to work. Let that vision, let that dream come to life. Honestly, F45 says, hey, Michael, here's the keys to the car, build a military division. Uh, and here we are, fast forward later. Not only have we built the military division, uh, we're making a global impact almost overnight. Hmm. That is so That is so dope. <laughs> you, you know, you, you hear about like some of these other places that are doing like, you know, some online stuff and um, for you guys to be able to transition, because first of all, I like to say, man, to to those companies that were unable to sustain and, you know, lost their business due to COVID, you know, I, I'm i sorry, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I hate that this whole thing did happen. Um, for those of you guys that are still continuing to evolve and to push through this whole thing, we all know the struggle. So thank you guys for setting the example for, you know, a lot of these other companies um, of, of ways that, you know, sometimes you just got to switch some things up in order to adapt to your situation. Um, yeah. and I think not only through your, you know, your earlier entrepreneurial things, which the store, uh, you know, the, the productions and everything, you show that you were able to adapt after getting out of the military. And once again, you know, we all kind of, um, we see that example and it kind of helps us out as well. So thank you. Yeah. You got to flow like water, you know, like, when you're going to always have people that are going to be roadblocks in your life and you got to flow like water, either flow to it, through it, uh, around it, but somehow or some way life has to keep moving forward. And you as a leader have to find, and you got to get dig back into those 14 leadership traits that the Marine Corps taught you. And let me go ahead and break this down. Potato head style <laughs> for, for, for our live 14th JJ did tie buckle justice, justice Knew it. deciseness, integrity, dependability, tack, initiative, endurance, bearing, and selflessness, courage, knowledge, loyalty, and enthusiasm. As the military director, the most important attribute of those 14 leadership traits at this season of my life is dependability. If I can get you to show up week after week, month after month, I can help transform your life, but you got to be dependable. Mm. I love that. Man, I would love to have a team like you guys. <laughs> You know, I was like, I'm, I'm a one-man show over here, but, you know, I'm doing what I can. 
Yeah. Hey, the way I see it is you are already starting your next career before you even let, left your current career. And just let me give you an example. Before I even started working for F-45, I was already coordinating with Marine Corps Air Station Miramar saying, yeah, oh, yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to be F-45. We're going to come in. We're going to host this big workout. And I'm going to have Mark Wahlberg come in. And I was already. You said all that? Mm. Oh, before I even before lighting. I even got hired by the company, spoken into existence. Hey, hey, hey Chris, Chris <laughs> hang on. Let me, let me give you let me give you something like let me let me give it to you like this. Mm -hmm. How you make it? <laughs> so, I mean, I've been walking and living this for a decade, and I'm not going to wait for somebody to say you're hired to make something happen. I'm going to start taking those dreams and desires and step after step, week after week, month after month, committed, not inspired. That commitment will get you to where you're supposed to be. But everybody's waiting, oh, give me the check and then I'll go to work. How about you go to work and that check has no choice but to show up? That's what happened for me. Just pull up. That's all you got to do is pull up and show up. You know? <laughs> if, if you be about what you talk about, and this is why I say, man, it's like, you know, there's this whole thing that goes around with like IG is where people only put up their most happiest moments. You know, it's it's not a, a full narrative of exactly how things are for that person, but they only show the parts of their life that they want to show. Too many people actually live the whole IG phase in life. Mm -hmm. No, you got to you got to be about what you are. If you're going to portray something, then be that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, don't talk. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Everyone's yeah. talking a, a, an amazing game. But, but you know, so inspiration i think i said this a couple of times i'll say it again so for those that are tuned in right now inspiration gets you started commitment gets you through uh it's not about the fluff it's when when the sizzle goes out and no one's paying attention anymore the question is is are you really committed to do something most people talk because they get excited about something and as soon as they're done talking about it it fulfills that desire to go do something until next time and I'm a true believer that don't talk about it, be about it. Start walking a walk and all your actions will do all the talking that you need to. So Chris, um, this, this is a good, this is a good segue to what Director Nichols just said. And I, I want to share this because, you know, we know servicemen and women out there. Uh, and if you're listening to this, uh, I want you to hear what I'm going to share. With you. Um, you're going to go through some struggles. It's going to happen. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. But there will be someone in your life today. There was someone probably yesterday. There'll probably be someone tomorrow who's got a message for you. And that message is simply this. I personally, I'll just share something personal to help you understand where I'm coming from. In 2013, I was diagnosed with stage three, stage four cancer. I had to reshape my whole mindset as to what that was going to look like. Well, my medical team came to me and they said, okay, Mr. Rogers, we're sorry. Uh, but we have some news for you. You have options. So I called my wife. I was, I was upset. I was a mess. But I'll tell you what. This is the one thing that I got, not the only thing, but one of the best things I got from my commanding officer when I was in the Navy. He said, gentlemen, either way it goes, today we are haze gray and underway. I was like, okay, so I need to get underway with this. So I called him back. I said, I want to get underway. What do I need to do? And I sat back and I thought about this. I got three choices, three, live, die, choose. Chose to live, here I stand. So sometimes you're gonna hit these walls and you're gonna have to figure out as Director Nichols said, you know what, is it, is it water hitting the wall? Because if you're, if you're water and you're hitting the wall, you can go around it or you can go over it. You can, you can, you can do that, right? So think about it this way, this, this program that we've, that's been developed here by our team it's not just about the job, man. It truly is not just about the job. So don't listen to this thinking, oh, we're going to get a job. No, 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 no. We talk to you about a career path, a journey into what's next for you, not the damn job. In fact, forget about the job, all right? Because the job's going to come if you decide you're going to bring us that 80%. I, I don't like making guarantees, and my team knows I hate this, but I'm very positive when it comes to things like this. All you got to do is show up. We will put you where you need to go. It's up to you. The, yeah. we, we got you, right? Yeah, it's, like us as, it's, like, <laughs> it's like us as drill instructors. We just need you to show up to recruit training so we can wear some asses out. <laughs> hey, either way, look, we got you. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is pay attention. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> and I'm going to count you down. <laughs>
one of my favorite quotes is, this is from June Archer, when your passion and purpose come together to work as one, nothing can stop you. And that's my motto every single day. You know, you have passion and you have purpose. I feel like we breathe and live that every day on this team. And that's what we're exactly what we're about in this program. You know, bringing your passion and your purpose, show up, be lead by example for those around you and everything falls into pay, place. And the last thing I'll say is you just have to have faith and believe full heartedly, you know, in what you're doing, right? Have faith that, you know, that even though, okay, we're still building this program and is it going to work? And our service members going to, you know, no, from the very beginning, we had faith. We believed in our purpose. We had passion and we had faith. And it's just all come to be because of that, you know? And I would say to everyone that that should be a, a great life goal, you know? So that's what we can offer here on the military team. <laughs> hey, one, one last, Chris, one last quote that I think is important. Listen, man, life's for the living, live it. Mm. Live it. Whatever that looks like for you, live it. People like this are rare. I, I, you know, when I was a young man, I had people that came into my life that were mentors of mine that I am grateful for grateful for. Michael's had the same, Caroline's had the same. You can lean on us if you really think this is for you and we will get after it. And we've got candidates that will speak the same love about this because they we remember when they started. We remember when they started. What the pandemic taught us as a team uh, was we were, we, we've got the power of communication through Zoom has really helped us stay connected to all of our candidates all over the world. That's why this is not just about, you know, being you know, in, in Texas or San Diego or Italy or Spain, we literally can reach out and touch them, at least through this video. So it's much like you're doing right now, um, everyone. And all they got to do is just give us a little bit of their time and just open their ears, open their minds and think about what's next for them. That's it. That's all we want to do. So I'll, I'll leave you with that. But I just think it's important that they, it's there and it truly is there. And none of us would be here if we didn't believe that 100%. Oh, I absolutely love that. And and listen, I know we got to go, but I, I got a few more things for you guys. Just a couple more questions. You know, it's a little portion that I've kind of added to my podcast. I call it kind of like a speed round, but it's more so of just kind of like questions on the fly. Uh, rapid fire. I, I got three. Rapid fire. That's going to be yeah, the new thing. You know, it's going to be rapid fire. And so I got, I got four and you guys can answer it however you want. And you can do all four of you guys or one or two. When I see like a kind of uh, weird pause, I'll move on to the next one. Um, and then we'll go into kind of transition. Pause here. Listen, you know when people don't want to answer, they're just like, mm. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if I do sense that, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll keep it moving. But um, and then afterwards, we you know, go into social media where they can find you and all that good stuff. So y'all ready? Ready. We're ready. Hey, I'm not going to get too personal, too crazy with it. But um, no, all right. That's fine. Hey, fire away, man. Okay. Rounds coming down range. <laughs> So you guys said that you work with all branches. What is your favorite? Uh, what was your favorite branch and worst branch to work with? And least favorite, not worst, but least. Coast Guard. Coast Guard. <laughs> hey, find them. As the least least favorite. Hey, find no, them. The, the, the problem is, is there they were originally uh, under the Department of Defense. Now right. they're under the Department of Homeland Security. So we don't have access to help them uh, the way that we're able to help the Army, Navy, Marines, and Air Force. So they're the hardest branch for us to work for work with because they have different funding and regulations. Hey, Coast Guard, if you're out there, we're trying to help you. We're trying. We're trying to help you. Just <laughs> so excited we got our first Coast Guard. So we do have a Coast Guard right. that's through skill. We have and one. We are trying to reach more. So tell your friends, Coast Guard, San Diego sector, you know who you are. <laughs> Somebody out there. Somebody. What about, what about best branch? So you wouldn't leave that at that. All right, Marines. Hey, you know that's all. You know that's what I wanted to hear. Come on, I'm, I'm, listen. I'm gonna let me let me take this. I'm gonna be real. I'm I'm not, I'm not sucking up. Well, maybe a little because he's my boss. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, but let me tell you why. Because I think the commanding officers of the Marine Corps realize something that their their Marines are gonna be getting out, and when they get out, they need a little they need a little help. And so uh, I'll give you one example because we got one in real time. We have a Marine. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Come in our program. The commanding officer reached out to the academic officer. He says, I, I'm, I'm looking at the skill bridge, the skill bridge package here. I got one Marine. This thing is pristine. I got this other Marine. It's not so good, but you know what? I'm sending him to you. How soon can he <laughs> sign up? I mean, he, he, I mean, it was like, 
Ooh, they tried to fap him, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're fapping them out, man. Giving them extra orders. <laughs> Get this. Man, they they the it. <laughs> process that Marines paperwork. You know. Fast, you know fast. what I like about it though? Like for me, the Marines not only are they totally beasty, like athletically, I was very impressed with just the you know that. But they're the protectors, you know. Like they're the ones that swoop in and come in and protect, right? And I think there's something like very beautiful about that going into the most difficult scariest situations and coming in there and protecting others, right? Like that, to me, that's really, that's what I like and admire the most. Love it, love it. All right, here we go, next question. What are you guys' favorite exercises? Like one each. Perfect. Mm. Perfect. No, for you to not the other people. Bodybuilders. Look, for me, it's running. I'm a runner all the way. Running is my favorite exercise. Um, but exercises, I like core a lot. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorites. And okay. deadlifts. <laughs> Everybody uh, does deadlifts. I know. I don't know. It's really relaxing, That's, especially the slow tempo. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. for, for, for me, it's actually two. It's uh, jump rope and split jumps. Ooh. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Coco now. <laughs> I got two dogs. Coco, he has to give Coco. They to, I was telling him earlier, you got to give like. Time now. My goodness. They get jealous. The two dogs. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> All right. What else you got? Underrated exercise. Star jumps, because try them in the sand. You think? I always think that's like we call it the hair tie station, where it's like easy to fix your hair. You know, it's like the relax station, but do star jump or, or um, jumping jacks in the civilian world. We call them star jumps at F45 and they're really hard in the sand. And we've been doing a lot of beach workouts. You know, a lot of our workouts have oh. been outside. I'm telling you, especially with thick sand. We went up and did one with our, our fellow uh, members at HQ headquarters up in Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, that's right. and I, it's like the biggest, thickest sand I have ever seen in my life. And I swear that the uh, head trainer picked that on purpose. <laughs> and I was sore for like three days. So. I would say that. <laughs> uh, and you can do a million different types of jumping jacks too. So here's the most underrated exercise because everybody thinks it looks slick on, on the TV commercials and all that. The battle rope. Oh battle yeah. yeah. I, I like the battle rope. The battle rope yeah. is the truth. It, 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 it separates the, 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 the girls from the ladies and the men from the boys. <laughs> because you know, with the battle rope, people get in and they want to get after it. Like, and it's 45 seconds of movement. And after yeah. they're spent, they're spent 15 seconds and they still got another 30 to go. I, I tell the members when I'm coaching, I'm like, some 45 seconds are longer than others. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I think uh, us Marines can definitely relate to that whole star jumps in the sand and <laughs> side shuttle hops in the sand. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm not saying that those side shuttle hops turn into star jumps. I, I don't know about that, but let's just say we've experienced that a couple of times. Absolutely. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, last one. So, what is your best overcome story, whether it's for uh, someone that you've actually trained or an actual trainer that you received? Like went, went, went from fat to skinny or went from, you know, hard headed and then one of the best trainers, like something like that. For, for me, for me, it, it was when I was a Marine Corps drill instructor. I was on my sixth platoon. I had this sergeant we had an all sergeant team and we had this drill instructor that nobody wanted on their team. And, um, he got assigned to me under my leadership and my team. Uh, I was the J and I was able to take someone that nobody wanted. And I was able to educate, train, mentor, and motivate to become and go on to be an amazing drill instructor where everybody loved it. And I really, I'm really good at taking people that no one's, a lot of people don't see hope for. I'm able to find that one glimmer of hope and penetrate that one spark and that spark uh, ends up growing. So with this with this Marine uh, drill instructor, uh, within the first two or three days of him working with me uh, on our new platoon, he pulled me aside. He said, I just want you to know that uh, thank you for correcting me thank you for talking to me like a man thank you for working with me uh i've learned more in two or three days with you than i i have all, out of my other three or four cycles with other drone instructors because when people get in leadership positions they have a tendency of hazing uh other people below them and not treating them like a man or a woman uh, and so me 
that was probably one of my greatest uh, overcome stories, seeing a drone instructor that nobody wanted that went on to become uh, an amazing uh, Charlie Company hat. Hey, I like that one. Y'all got some big shoes to fill. Come on, bring them. <laughs> he, he lays down thick. <laughs> yeah, I would say for me, you know, I had a really difficult upbringing. I'll just leave it at that. And I, for me, I feel like I've overcome so many different things in my life. And it, for me, it was, you know, really my high school cross country and track and field coaches. I was in, and my, the athletes that I got to be on the team with and, you know, they believed in me so much. And I remember I would win the spirit award for captain, all these things. And they, they just, they believed they uh, gave me so much energy and they told me, well, you can do this, you can overcome. And I think just being a cross country runner, overcoming that next hill, you know, and knowing that you can get there and maybe sometimes it's slow, right. And just got to keep on keeping on, but you can get up over that hill and then come down the other side. And for me, they basically inspired my entire life. I feel they're the reason I'm where I am here today. The reason I've been very successful in my life, personally, academically with coaching, with everything I've done. And they inspired in me you know, a, a lifelong goal to pay it forward and become the kind of coach for other kids in particular. Most of my work has been with youth, now working up to elite, but they inspired in me a passion to give back and pay it forward. And it literally inspired my entire life path and made me want to become a high school coach in particular so that I can be that positive, you know, role model and make a positive impact, even if it's in one kid's life, you know, and maybe they're struggling at home or maybe they're struggling with something and, you know, just breathing that life and that positivity into them and, and leading by example to show them like you can also overcome and like the sky's the limit for you. You know, I believe in you and I believe in everything that you can become in, in, in sport and in life. And I think we all need a mentor. We all need someone in our life. It can even be just one person that really believes in us and, 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 and helps us manifest that in our own life. Right. So for me, that's everything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what you got, Chaz? Come on! I know you've been out of loss for words. I actually have I back have. in Vietnam. Back in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Back, back when me and Bill used to hang out, you know. <laughs> he, he, just, he just takes the gloves off, man. He, he just, you know, <laughs> stick and move, baby. So real quick, uh, I actually have two. One is the work we're doing, and the other was personal. The first one's really quick, but it needs saying because they know who this person is. We had a young Marie. Um, who struggled uh, with us in the beginning. I mean, she just struggled. And I did one-off uh, meetings with her. I um, I got on calls with her. I texted her. We tried a little bit of everything. And to Director Nichols, um, and I'm very happy about this. He, 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 we had a one-off. We, we often side huddle a lot, the three of us. Right. We just do some personal one-on-one -on -one time and get some things resolved. And something that he he brought up to me, he says, somebody out there needs this person's talent. And he says, mm -hmm. that's why I brought you in. You go find that place for her. And so I worked hard, man. And I thought about it. We had a, we, we circled back to a familiar place. And we were able to put this young lady in that, in that position. And we had a call about two weeks ago with the owner. Um, and it was awesome. He was, he could not shut up about how great that candidate was doing for them and helping them build their business and take care of their members in an F45 studio. When I was at, I was kind of at a point a few months back, and Michael can speak to this, where I was like, I might not get this done. And by the way, just so you know, Chris, why this is a big deal, I'm a hundred for a hundred. We as a team are a hundred for a hundred. So you were messing with my number, man. I like you, you, you caught yourself on that one. He's like, man, I did all. No, 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 no. We did this. <laughs> you know? It's all. So, very, yeah. So we overcame that. Very proud of that. And she is thriving. Got a text from her a couple of days ago. She's like, thank you so much for the opportunity. You guys didn't give up on it. You believe in me. So that was a big overcoming. Uh, but I'll leave you with this. Um, this is huge for me because I'm going into my eighth year of survival um, from prostate cancer. And what's really important? Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't talk your way through that one. Oh man! You got to give congratulations on that. All right, all right, all right. We'll let we'll we'll do that. Well, you know, Michael's very humble, and I and I and I tend to be, you know, I, I'm very careful about what I share when it comes to this. But the reason I'm sharing this today is I'm sure someone out there is listening, and they're going through some kind of a trial, some kind of a tribulation. And right now, it may have just happened, and it's raw, and it's new or they've been at it for a while and they still haven't come out of it. And what I can tell you is there's always light at the end of the tunnel, but you gotta look. And so what happened for me 
was this last year. Uh, and by the way, I, and the reason I'm bringing this up because I, I have to support my team in this effort. I went through some major treatment during COVID-19 when I first got onto the team and my team was patient. And because of that, and because I persevered through that, uh, I get a phone call from a, from a connection of something I did for Pfizer about two years ago uh, about my cancer journey and the fact that there was poor research on uh, prostate cancer in black men as it relates to you know frequency and detection. Check this right. out. I checked two of the major boxes in prostate cancer. One, I'm African-American. Two, I'm a military veteran. Boom, check both those boxes and my risk was so much higher than anybody else of my other uh, of, of, of others like black of the browns and white men in the society so that pissed me off so i just said okay fine let me find out what's going on so Pfizer came to me about uh three months ago and they said hey look people are not going to their appointments um it's a problem and we did some research and we understand that you're an advocate for this you're a champion for this would you mind you know, being a spokesperson for us. This is for Pfizer. This is the same Pfizer that came out with the very first vaccine for COVID-19. So this okay. is no accident, right? This is no accident. So I said, yes. And by the way, I volunteered for this. My, my colleagues know, I don't really, I don't look for pay for, for most things. They were like, no, 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 no. We're actually hiring you as talent. We're going to pay you for doing this. Now remember eight years ago, I wasn't sure what I was gonna, what was gonna happen with this cancer. Fast forward present day, I'm literally the national face for prostate cancer for research through Pfizer. Full page ad in, in the Washington Post, radio radio announcements all over the all over the country. And this is what's crazy about this life we get to live, man. I get a phone call from someone in New York City, an old personal training client of mine, who said, "Oh my God, Chaz." I almost wrecked my car. I heard your voice in my car on my radio station going across the Brooklyn Bridge in New York City. Oh my God. And, and I shared that with them and the people from Pfizer were like, this is crazy. I said, I know. So overcoming something, right? First got diagnosed with it on my 45th birthday in April. And here I stand today able to help people advocate and do all that. And then we're doing this stuff for veterans. So it just kind of all ties together. And Caroline can tell you, I'm a numbers guy. And and it just, you know, that 45, that 2013, that number thing. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Hey, I'm doing the math in my head right now. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> that is amazing. That You're is absolutely crazy. honored, man. For your honor, um, we wish you continued success with this. Um, we really, we really appreciate uh, what you're doing. Um, we thank you for your service, first and foremost. And um, we are grateful. This is uh, truly, there's so much more to come from us with this um, for our service members and their spouses. And we believe wholeheartedly that uh, we were called to do this. This is not a job for us. Um, that's the beauty of this. And I think that's why um, some of the things that we've had to persevere through have and give to us in, in, in you know, in the calling for service members, right? Sometimes you got to, military, you got to make some sacrifices. You got to, you got to dial it back, reroute it, re and then get, have a, have a new mission plan. We've been doing all that. Um, we're undeterred, as Caroline will tell you. We don't take no for an answer. There really soft are no yes, no's. Soft yeses, just soft yeses. Yeah, this is, soft, <laughs> this is just a soft yes or a maybe. It's just a no for now, you know what I'm saying? Okay, no, yes, no, but we'll no, just say no. no. No, no for the moment. you actually hear yes. <laughs> so, so thank you, brother. We we really yeah, thank we you so much because yeah. No, oh, yeah. absolutely. I, I appreciate you guys. And like I said, uh this this has been an amazing experience. Um I, I appreciate the opportunity and this is what I'm saying. You know, between you guys helping veterans transition out and you know, me trying to get the word out about the veterans' lives to show the world that we're more than just who we are in the military or you know, when we were active service and um, for us to come together, like you said, it's it, it's amazing, and this is how the veteran brother sisterhood should be, all times. You know, it's it's there's always something bigger than us. You know, I don't care how big my platform gets; like it's never. I'm me as a person fundamentally. I'll never change. This is how it should be. So I appreciate you guys for uh, coming on here to to speak about F45 and, and to speak about your experiences. But before we leave. I need everybody to plug their their Instagrams or whatever y'all want to be reached at. You know, the people need to know. <laughs> so mine is pretty easy. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, 
YouTube, all at Staff Sergeant Nichols. SS <laughs> SSGT Nichols, N I C H O L S. Uh, I'd love to connect with you uh, guys and girls. And, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, I just want to share my heart, my passion with people. And uh, hopefully uh, we can connect. Yeah. And you can find me at Run Love 80, you know, one love. <laughs> <laughs> Run Love 80, that's me. <laughs> no, I'm always I'm always coaching, so it's real simple. My IG handle is C Rogers spelled out. So the first initial C Rogers Coach. And that's my Instagram handle. And you'll you'll pick me up on LinkedIn and Facebook and all that from there. Yeah. So Absolutely. thank you so much, Chris. It's been just a pleasure. Anytime you guys want to, like I said, to me, we're one family. We've been linked already. If you guys, if there's anything that I can do on my behalf, you know, please let me know if there's a way I can help to get the word out um, about F45 and all the benefits for, you know, us vets. Please let me know. Absolutely. And yeah, vice versa. If, if you need something from us, you let us know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm going to definitely, next time I send you a message, I'm not going to wait a year to get back to you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Hey, it's, it's all good, man. You know, like, here's the reality. Life happens. We have good days. We have bad days. But you got to pick yourself back up and keep moving forward. Absolutely. Don't cry to quit. Cry to keep going. Woo! I'm going to have a field day deciphering all these quotes because it, like, the, the amount of quotes that came out of this episode is ridiculous. Hey, hey, hey Chris. Hey, Chris. Coming, coming to a book near you. <laughs> It's just gonna be the, it's gonna be the militarisms from you know <laughs> from the military team at F forty five training. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I tag you guys all because you know we we edit clips and we'll have um, once this comes out I'll let you guys know what, what day we're gonna post and all the clips I'll make sure I tag all you guys on there as well. Yeah. And thank you guys so much. If you guys know anybody that has a, a story that you think that should be told, please let them know about veteran influencers and um, you know the podcast, the brand, all that good stuff. I highly appreciate. Yeah. Uh, and if anybody that is listening and wants to know how to get a hold of us, all you have to do is go to f45vip.com. That's f45vip.com. Uh, the VIP yeah. stands for Veterans Impact Program. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, like I said, thank you guys so much for this amazing experience. I'm still kind of cheesing right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> The man, the myth, you know. <laughs> hey, I'm about to go watch an episode right now, but <laughs> Chris, Chris, he, he he's all right, man. He's all right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, <laughs> it's so Chris, it was an honor to meet you, and uh, honestly, God's got a got His hand on you, and you're gonna do amazing things. And by do, you just doing what God's called you to do, it's gonna make another impact in other people's lives. So just do what you called to do. And if there's anything, Chris, honestly, um, I, my, my reach is, my reach is very wide and very broad. These two can tell you, um, I've got people in the broadcast business, uh, in the industry that are good friends of mine. One of my dear friends, an actual fellow survivor has a national podcast out of the Baltimore area. Um, he's someone you definitely want to meet. Uh, he's been an inspiration to me and I think, uh, he would be, be happy to work with you. He has a brother that was a service member as well. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'm dude, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. This is good stuff. Good job. Yeah. Good stuff, Chris. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We're definitely going to have you guys on again in the future. Be a pleasure and an honor. All right, brother. Thank Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Have a great day. You too, you too bud. All right.